So today's webinar is on Google Playbooks. So what is Google Playbooks? Google Playbooks is an app that is designed for you to download eBooks, comics, textbooks, audiobooks, manga, and more. Google Playbooks can be accessed through the Google Play website through the mobile app, which is available both on iOS and Android devices, and through the Chrome web browser. If you simply search um, for Google Playbooks. So some of the features, Google Playbooks allows for highlighting text, translations, adding notes, and has a built-in dictionary. So you can see over here to the right, um, if you um, highlight a certain word, if you're not sure what it means, you can define it or translate it to different language, or you can search to learn more about that particular word, or you can just make a note about it. You're also able to sync your eBooks along with notes, highlights, and bookmarks on many different devices. So for example, if you wanted to um, do this on your phone, if you were logged into your Google account on your laptop, you would find your, um, your notes there as well. Some more of the features that Google Playbooks offers include uh, text-to-speech support. You can adjust background color, text alignment, and brightness. Books can be purchased or rented directly from the app. It supports the publishing of books by allowing uploads of PDF documents. And it allows reading even when you're offline, which is really handy when you're traveling or if you're in the car for a long duration of time or at an appointment and you want to just um, kill some time, um, you're available to do that without being connected to the internet. Um, and on our right-hand side here, we just see some more of the settings that uh, Google Playbooks offers. So you can enable PDF uploading, download over Wi-Fi only, which is really handy, um, just so that you don't run into data over usage and a few other options here. You can also um, adjust font, font size, layout, and paragraph spacing, and it can be customized to preference while you're reading. Um, and it's just showing here. Uh, so this would be kind of your fonts. Over here, you, it shows you the different ones that you, can, that you prefer to read your book in. And now we'll just go over some of the uh, pros and cons. Some of the pros include that Google Playbooks is a free application. Um, it's compatible with all devices. It's simple, straightforward. Um, it's got a great interface and it includes more than 5 million titles. However, some of the cons include that it requires a Google account in order to access the books. And you must purchase the books from the uh, website, so you cannot make any purchases from the application on your phone. So now we'll just go over getting started on the Google Play website. So in your browser, you would go to uh, www.play.google.com slash store. If you're not already logged into your Google account in your web browser, it would prompt you to do so. Um, as well as if you don't have a Google account yet, that would be where you could sign up for one. And then in the menu bar on the left, you would select books. So on our right hand side, it's just showing what we would see if we were on the website. Um, on the left hand side of the website, we would go all the way down to books. And we'll go over this in the live demo as well. Um, and this is just showing some of the features and categories while you're on the website. So my books includes books that you have added in your library. So it kind of acts like um, your storage and shop is for books that you want to buy. Um, so you would use the space bar just up top here. That's where you would find books or items um, to suit your interests. 
right here are the categories of items that you will find. If you only want audiobooks, click the category that um, is called audiobooks. So right here. You can also search books relating to a specific genre, and a genre is a topic of book, such as science, by clicking the button genre, which is just over here in the circle. After selecting a genre, you may select a subgenre, um, a subgenre being a more specific topic like astronomy, which is under the genre of science. Um, you will see the ebook price, rating, title, author, and cover of the book. So we see that um, just with the arrow here. We can see the author, the stars to see how, what other people have rated it, the price, and such. Upon clicking on a book, you will see more details like its description. You will also be able to view a sample upon clicking free sample, which is a really cool feature. It's also a good idea to look at the ratings and reviews, which you can see uh, before reading or purchasing it, um, just to get a good idea of what other people thought so that um, you know that you're prepared for a good book or you know no surprises coming. So to buy an ebook, you click the price button to buy the book. If you do not already have a payment method saved, you must add one. And the payment methods that they accept are credit or debit card, PayPal, or you can redeem a code. Um, for example, if you received gift card from somebody. Once you've added a payment method, you can purchase the book. It will then be available to read in your library. So here we can see that if somebody wanted to buy this book, um, High Stakes, they would select in the first box up top in the red where it says 399 ebook. And then it shows you your payment options. So whichever one you wanted to use in order to pay, you would select that. Once you've downloaded and opened the app, it will prompt you to sign into your Google account. Once you're signed in, you can scroll through the top selling ebooks and audiobooks on the homepage, or you can use the search bar to search for a specific title. So this is just showing on the app now. You could search up top on that search bar here, um, as well as just kind of going over different categories. So it looks like some books that are on sale, as well as the top sellers currently. To learn more about a title, tap on it. From here, you can add it to your wish list, listen to a free sample, read the description, or view ratings and reviews. Um, and again, just to our right here, we can see if we were viewing this on a phone, this is kind of what it would look like. Um, options to add to wish list, to view the free sample, and down below, you would be able to also see the ratings and reviews. So this is just kind of going over some of the other categories here. So there's the library. The library includes your books. You can access and read books that you purchased from the Google Play website. There's also um, a category called your shelves. Now, Google Play also allows you to create shelves to match the way that you think. So I believe this is kind of just a way to organize the books that you have purchased and are in your library. There's also your wish list. Um, that's where you keep track of the books that you are hoping to read. And there's also your profile. This is where you manage your Google account, your playbook settings, um, as well as help and feedback features. And this just goes over some of the settings that you would see on Google Playbooks if you were viewing it on a mobile device. So again, there's that option to download only over Wi-Fi. Um, you can get into your Google app settings here. Um, and it looks like there's uh, settings specifically for your reading experience, such as 3D effects for page turns, tools for beginner readers, automatic page turns, which is pretty cool, um, and so on. So now we're going to do a live demo on the website here. 
So here we're just on the Google homepage. Now there's two different ways that you can access the books. I just want to note that I am already signed into my Google account here. Um, but if I wasn't, then this little circle to the top right of the screen is where you would click um, and it would allow you to sign in or create your own Google account if you don't already have one. But since I am already signed in, we can type in Google Play Books. And it would be this first one here. And then to the left of our screen, we can see um, a few steps down the books option. Now, I just want to also show you another way that you can get to the playbooks. So right beside um, your little account circle here, if you just select this Google Apps option, you can actually see um, a lot of these Icons should look familiar if you've got mobile devices or tablets. Um, we can see the Play Store icon right here and we can click this and it'll bring us right to that same page where we'll go and look for books. So now that we're in Google Play Books, we can see um, the search bar. So if we were interested in um, a particular book, then this is where we would search it. So let's just say we wanted to read a book on Bruce Springsteen. We could just type that in. And then we'd be able to see a variety of different options. And what's really cool about Google Playbooks is that it's not just eBooks, which are electronic books where you would read on your tablet, but you can also find books that are audio books. Um, and I believe sometimes you can also find comics, textbooks, um, and more. Now, just being on the Google Play Books home screen, we can also scroll down and have a look at what they're kind of promoting right now. So we see deals for under $5. As well as books that are available for pre-order, so they haven't come out yet, but free sneak peeks. And now to uh, the left part of the screen, this is where we can see other information that we went over in the slideshow. Specifically the wish list, I think is really cool. So before um, this presentation, I was logged into this same Google account on my phone and I was on the Google Play app and I added these two books to my wish list. And when I logged on from my computer, uh, it was right here for me waiting. So I thought that was really handy to be able to kind of seamlessly transition between my phone and laptop. Now, if we wanted to know more about this book, this is where we would click on it. If we wanted to view the free sample, we would select that option right here. And we can just kind of flip through. And it'll provide you with a few pages of the book. I was looking through earlier and one of the books, I think it allowed for maybe 30 pages of a book, which I thought was a pretty decent way to kind of get a good idea of whether or not you're gonna like the book. I'll just show you too, um, how many times we can turn the page before the sample is done. So we're already into chapter three, it looks like. So as we can see, we're well past uh, the 30 page mark um, and into chapter four, which I think is a really good um, service that Google provides when it comes to deciding if you want to buy a book. Just getting back to the wish list there. So 
let's say we had read through that sample and we decided that, okay, yeah, I think I want to read this one. Then we would click on the price here. And then that's where it asks me which of the three payment methods I wish to select. So if I was going to pay with my PayPal, I would select that. And then it would bring me and I would enter my payment um, information. And then this book would end up, instead of being in my wish list, it would be in my library. which I believe would be under my books. So had I made the purchase, it would be just under purchases here. So we were talking about in the presentation, the different genres. So just up top here, this is where you can toggle through all the different types of genres. Um, so if you were interested in home and garden, you would select home and garden. And then it'll show you a variety of different options. So you see the top books in home and garden. It's quite a few. But we can also search through the subgenres. So baskets, for example. So now we're looking specifically for baskets in the home and garden books. So it's a really good way to narrow down whatever it is that you're looking for. Also to the left-hand side, you can see um, the option for audiobooks, comics, textbooks, and children's books. There's also options to go over your account details, your payment methods. Um, so say you wanted to buy books from this website frequently, you could actually save your payment method so that you didn't have to enter it in every single time you wanted to make a purchase. But instead, as the presentation um, mentioned, you would just sign into your Google account just to verify that it's you making the purchase. You can buy gift cards for other people. So if you were in a book club, for example, and you wanted to buy your friend a book, um, you can track your activity as well as add parental features. So hopefully that covers the basics of using uh, Google Playbooks.